Welcome to another video by YCIC Lab. In this video, I'll cover how to perform lateral movement using Posh command and control software. And we'll do this using the technique called daisy chains. So what is a daisy chain? So in very simple terms, it's a sequence of connected daisies. Now, if we take this concept and apply it to the cybersecurity field, we'll get a series of compromised hosts communicating with a command and control server via chain of implants or command and control agents. Now to help you understand this, I have a very simple diagram here. So here is a C2 server and this is our first compromised target. Now this target is talking to our command and control software using a C2 agent or implant that is installed onto this target. Now let's say as we move across in the network, we compromise these four hosts as well. Now, in order to link them with the command and control server, we can either directly let them talk to our command and control server. So in that case, all five of these hosts will be communicating directly with our C2 server. Now, this has certain disadvantages, which I'll talk about later. Now, another way of doing this is that once we have compromised a target host, we can establish a server on this and we can let other command and control agents talk to this host and then in turn relay all the traffic from these hosts to our command and control server. So for example, if we have to give any command to this, our command and control server will talk to host one and in turn the host one will relay that command to host two the host who will execute the command and return its result to host one, which will in turn return the results to our command and control server. So in this case, this host is called a daisy server and this chain of command and control server and these two hosts is called a daisy chain. Now, if we want to expand it further, we can create another daisy server on this host and we can let host three talk to the server. And then in turn, we can create another daisy server on this and we can let host four talk to this server. So in this way, via this chain, our command and control server will be able to execute commands on host four, but without communicating directly with it. Now this has certain advantages, which again, I'll talk about in the next slide. What we can also do is if we want to keep only one daisy server in our target environment, we can have all other implants report to it. For example, let's say we compromise another host, host five, and we don't want to establish a daisy server on this. However, we want to use our existing daisy chain. So we can just let it report to our host one daisy server. And then using host one, our C2 server will be able to communicate with host five. So in this way, you can have either a chain of daisy servers, or you can have a single host communicating to the command and control server and other implants talking to this host one, which is a daisy server in this case. Now let's see what are the pros and cons of using daisy chain implants. Now the first obvious pro is that only one implant is talking to our command and control server. So this reduces the visibility of our C2 server. If you have more number of implants talking to our C2 server, there is a high probability that the traffic might get detected and it will result in your C2 server being blocked within the network. Now, another pro is that these daisy chains via Posh command and control, they work via HTTP GET requests, and this helps in concealing the traffic. Now, the major con of daisy chaining your implants like this is, let's say if this daisy server goes down, then our command and control server will lose communication with all subsequent hosts in the chain. So if host one goes down, the C2 server will not be able to communicate with host two, host three, host four, or host five. This can be mitigated by using another layer of command and control channels. Now let's see this in practice. So here we already have an implant running on this foothold to machine and we have administrator privileges on that machine. And this is required if you want to start a daisy server on a particular host. To interact with this agent, let's type 20 and 
to start the daisy server we will just issue the command start daisy and it will start up a wizard that will ask a couple of questions which are necessary for daisy server to run so we are running in elevated context and the ip address of our compromised host is 192.168.3.45 and we want to run it on port 80 and yes this is the first daisy chain in our chain and the c2 url is this so we are going to use this url and we can leave it blank we don't want to use any domain front header we don't want to use any proxies either and for our purpose the password or account expiration date is not relevant so we leave it blank as well and finally yes we like to create payloads for this daisy server so we will press y and here we need to enter the payload name so let's enter foot h2 and now what posh c does is it will generate your daisy server specific payloads and it will store it in your posh c2 project directory which in my case it's ptad lab all right so our payloads have been generated now let's see how we can invoke a daisy payload on another host so we have a couple of ways of doing it we can invoke it via wmi if wmi is enabled on a target machine or we can use winrm to execute the payload if winrm is enabled on our target machine now let's say that using our enumeration method maybe via bloodhound or any other tool we have identified that our current user has access or has session on another machine and using this context we can execute command on that machine so we can use this access to launch the daisy payload on the target machine now to do that we we'll first need the payload that we are going to execute on the second machine and the payload that i am going to use is foot h2 payload dot bat and if you have a closer look at it this is a base 64 encoded powershell command so now that we've copied this payload let's execute it on our target machine and we'll use the winrm method for that so this is the command that we are going to use invoke command which is a standard commandlet in powershell and it has a parameter script block which takes the command that we need to issue and finally the computer name on which we want to issue this command and i can just paste this command and execute it and we should see another implant on our posh c2 server so we have another implant with implant id 21 and here this d means that this is a daisy implant so this is not communicating directly to our posh c2 server it is communicating via this implant which is a daisy host and in the output window it gives us certain information about the powershell environment in which our implant is running now let's interact with this implant and let's see the ip address of this machine so there are multiple methods of doing this uh, i'm using the standard ip config command and i am running it via sharp ps module and it gives me a warning that i am not running a c sharp implant all right so i don't need to use sharp ps in that case i can simply use ip config and it gives me an object warning because this traffic might get detected but in this case i don't care so uh, i want to continue running the command and the ip address for this machine is 192.168.3.31 now let's do a quick experiment let's run wireshark and see if there is any direct communication between our command and control server and this implant
So here I'm running Wireshark and I've put the IP address of a target machine. Now let's try to execute some commands via the posh C2 server and see if there is any direct communication here. Let's try a very simple command ls which would list all the files. So there was no output here. Let's try pwd and it says the current directory is users administrator documents and let's see if we have any direct communication between our posh c2 server which has the ip address of 192.168.3.200 and this target machine which has the ip address of 192.168.3.31 and here if you see in the wireshark window we cannot see any communication between our posh c2 server and our target implant all communication is going via 192.168.3.45 which is our daisy host implant and as you can also see that all the communication is happening over http get requests so this was a very simple way in which you can establish daisy chain via posh c2 command and control software if you would like to see more of posh c2 in action we have a course on red team adversary emulation where we give a live demonstration of an adversary emulation exercise on a fintech startup and in this training or exercise we perform a mix of techniques including brute forcing active directory enumeration and attacks privilege escalation phishing and throughout this training we are using posh c2 as our command and control software this is a beginner level training and you can enroll in this course or training via the link shown here or you can also find the link to this training in the description below so that's all i had for this video and if you like our videos do subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and colleagues thank you for watching this and i'll see you soon in the next video